Hi, this is Jake. I'm here to talk to you today about the Scion SCXML command line developer tools. And I am going to demonstrate those tools right now. So the first thing that we do is we install them. npm install g Scion SCXML slash CLI. And that will install the tools, which will take about one minute. Okay, that's done. Now we uh, have a command available, scion, and scion help shows the subcommands. So we can run scion init to initialize a new SCXML file, scion viz to visualize that SCXML file, scion compile to compile an SCXML file to JSON or JavaScript, run to run the SCXML file, which gives us a little REPL shell to send it events and uh, interactively. Scion execute to run an SEXML file without giving us a command line shell. Lint to run code intelligence on the SEXML file. And monitor, which uh, opens up a monitor debugging utility. So uh, I will demonstrate this now. Do make dir temp4 directory okay and run scion init this gives us a basic scxml file prints it to standard out you can put it into a file foo.scxml and then let's visualize it with scion viz Okay, so, um, so we can see that uh, in the code that there are two states, A and B, the transition from A to B and a transition from B to A. We can see that represented over here in the visualization. Uh, now one thing I want to point out is that if I change the text, um, then that will automatically update the visualization. Um, so it's uh, so the visualization utility watches the file and updates the visualization in response to those code changes, which can be handy if you're working with a SEXML file and you want to see it represented visually. Um, now we can compile the file, and I'll just show what this looks like. Um, talk more later about uh, why this is useful. But, um, but you can compile the SSEXML file to JavaScript. And the advantage to doing this is if you're using SCXML in the browser and you don't want to load the entire uh, compiler, the entire Scion compiler, um, then you can, compile, you can use the compiler to compile the SCXML to JavaScript in advance and then run that using the Scion core library in the browser. Scion core library is much smaller payload 
than the Scion compiler library. Um, so that's a better approach for working with SEXML in the browser. Um, the next utility is Scion run. So if I run that on foo.sexml, then it gives us this shell, which shows, it prints out what states we are exiting, which transitions we're taking, and which states we're entering, and then shows us finally the configuration of states at the end of that big step. So now we're in B. Oops, did I, I think I changed the file. Get rid of, oh yeah, I changed these names. Let's do it now. T1, T2, T1, T2, toggles back and forth from A to B. Now if we wanna represent this visually and get a visual trace, we can do scion run dash dash monitor and that gives us this monitor debugging user interface, where if we send it events, it will give us a visual trace of um, how, the, uh, how the events are causing the state to change inside of that SEXML session. So for example, you can see here that state B is highlighted in red and state A is highlighted in blue, the red states are the states that were entered in that small step, at the end of that small step, and the blue states are the states that were exited. And likewise, the red transitions are the transitions that were taken in that small step. You can see over on the right here, there's additional debugging information, such as the session hierarchy. So if you're using SEXML invoke, then you'll see the hierarchy of invoked sessions on the right here. Uh, the input event, which prompted the small step. If there's a data model, you'll see the data model. Um, and then if there are a number of events in the inner queue, you'll see that over on the right here as well. And then finally, you can step back through. There's a log of events at the bottom, which are able to step through to see how the um, how the state had changed over time. So the next command is um, lint. And lint is interesting uh, because it allows you to run code intelligence on the file. And it's built as a uh, plugin for ESLint. So if you're familiar with how ESLint works, then you'll have a um, small advantage. Um, so it requires a little bit of setup. So first we have to uh, set up ESLint. And there are two ways to do that. The first way is to install ESLint as a global node module. Then the second way is to install it as a local node module. And I think the second way is the preferred approach. So that's the approach I'm going to use here. So I'll start by doing npm init to create a package.json and then install with save dev eslint locally and then the eslint plugin which is under scion scxml eslint plugin sharpie. Sharpie is German for lint so that name is like a pun. So that'll take a moment to install. Good. So then we need to initialize the ES, um, ESLint configuration file. We'll do that with ESLint init. Answer a couple of questions. Support ES5. Um, sure, run in the browser. 
Yes, we use common JS. No, we don't use JSX. Prefer spaces, prefer single quotes, Unix, do not require semicolons, and then prefer JSON format. So now we have an ESLint JSON file in that directory. And uh, now we can run scion lint on the scxml file. And that won't be very interesting because there's nothing wrong with that file. So let's go back into temp6, edit the file, and add an, a transition at the top level, which is illegal in the SEXML syntax. Run lint again, and now it complains that there's a schema validity error. So the first thing that lint does is it checks to make sure that the uh, XML is valid um, based on the SEXML schema. Um, it also checks for JavaScript syntax errors and linting errors. So for example, if I wrote some kind of something that was a syntax error here, oops, put it inside of a script tag. and ran lint, then it would complain about that. It says there's a parsing error. And then if I reference a variable which hasn't been defined in the data model, then it will complain about that too. X is not defined, Y is not defined. Oh, and then it complains about the semicolon. And then likewise, it also complains about um, ESLint errors, um, errors that would be picked up by the um, ESLint configuration. So this is a way of running um, JavaScript lint on scripts that are contained inside of the SEXML. Um, the last two commands, execute and monitor, are not going to be very uh, useful um, until we get to more advanced topics um, such as running um, such as running SEXML applications inside of Node.js. So um, if you're running an SEXML application inside of Node.js um, then it can be helpful to run the monitor in a separate process and then the Node.js process registers um, a, uh, acts as a client and uh, sends events to the um, monitor server, which then displays them here. Um, so that will be uh, in a future demonstration. And uh, execute is useful for testing. Um, so that is... Uh, that's the end of this demo, and I hope it was interesting, and I look forward to receiving your feedback. Thank you.